Hey there, everyone. This is hopefully going to be the start of a good series, for me at least. Um, in the last, I don't know, a while, since I started collecting games, more or less, there's been nothing more that's pissed me off than having to find cables. Now, I've moved a lot recently, and to quote the Red Hot Chili Peppers, I finally settled in my final location. And I can't find half my fucking cables. There's been many a times where I'd go to stream or go to play games with someone and it's just like, I don't know where the video cables are. I don't know where the power cables are. Controllers, less so, but there's been those moments as well. So what I want to do is create a system where I can combine USB-C, a standardized, standardized, sta standardized video cable, and be able to plug in whatever console I want, hook it up to, well, the, the dream and how this all started was way back when, when I wanted to mod all my consoles or at least create cables to be able to use Neo Geo controllers. The reason for that is I absolutely fucking love the Neo Geo CD controllers. They are incredible. And 8-Bit Doe just released a Bluetooth one. And I have a Blue Retro. And I know you can internalize them. Now, I'm no electrical engineer. I'm a software engineer. So, when it comes to that, I don't really know what I'm doing. But I like learning. And I like figuring stuff out. So, the whole plan is going to be to get a console, get a bunch of parts, and be able to plug it into USB-C and have Bluetooth controllers just work. Thankfully a lot of my work's already been done for me and it's more of a matter of research and doing things correctly. But I want to set some ground rules and some additional things I'd like, which I think are all possible. This shell, I'm not going to modify it. Well, I'm not going to irreversibly modify it, which already poses a problem because of the way this is set up. But we'll get to that. The second rule is, or the second goal, is I want to be able to take just this, and at most one cartridge, or one piece of media, and I should be able to play every game. So flash cards, um, I'd like to build them in, ideally, but I think that would probably ruin the functionality. There is probably a way to turn, like, be able to switch between the cartridge slot and a flash cart that's built in. Once again, I'm not an electrical engineer, but I'm going to try to figure it out, I think. And I want to be able to take a single video cable, doesn't matter what console. So I've got two minds about this. There's shit tons of HDMI mods, there are so many. But I want to play on a CRT for consoles like the SNES, where it's that's what it was designed for. Yeah, you can get upscalers that do like um, scan lines and effects to make it all look like it's meant to on a CRT. But I don't want that. So it's going to be one of two cables, one of them being HDMI, which everyone has. If a console supports HDMI natively or it's error appropriate, like I'm thinking Xbox error, so Xbox, PS2, GameCube I want to say was the one from that era. I think so, I think it was the GameCube, it was 360 and Wii, yeah. Um, or I'm thinking probably the Genesis 2 or the Mega Drive 2 video cable, because I think off the top of my head that's the smallest one that can accommodate uh, a composite component and S-Video, because I think it's an 8-pin connector. So that's my goal. Whether I'll be able to achieve it or not, now, that's the one I'm not sure of. I've gone into this with very minimal research, and very minimal <laughs> parts being bought. I have a small box of stuff I've bought for modding, and this is one of the things that's in there. That's also got a couple of other mods and stuff in it that I have planned, but that's neither here nor there. And in here we have, if I can get the dang thing open, probably one of the, the biggest pieces of the puzzle, for at least the power side. 
this is a USB-C, and it's going to be very hard to see, hopefully I've got that under the camera, otherwise. It's a USB-C trigger board. The way USB-C works is it's a handshake, where you say, hey, I want this much voltage. And it will go, okay, I can supply that voltage, that's the power plug, we'll say that. And then it will just chuck that voltage down and be on its merry way. Now, the one thing I've just noticed is, oh, that's 9 volt, not 5. Sick. I thought I was going to get in trouble there. 5 volt. Usually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry. This particular power brick is very special. USB-C is a set of standards, not necessarily a standard. And the issue with that is, if you make a USB-C power brick or a USB-C access accessory, another word, I'm tripping on my words, Jesus, you don't have to actually implement all the standards which is a problem because one of the standards that people don't usually implement is I think the 12 volt, which if you've seen <laughs> any number of like um, power supplies from game consoles, quite a few of them are 12 volts. That poses an issue. This guy actually does 12 volts at three and a half amps, I think it is, which in my minimal research should be able to power the GameCube. Now, there are certain consoles I'm not going to be able to do this for. So anything past the 360, the PS3 era. That said, PS3, PS4, PS5, I think as well, just has a standard power cable. I'm very happy with that. Internalized power supplies are great. Standard power cables are fantastic. Xbox 360, not so much, but they want like 150 watts, I think, and this is 65. Now, I do have 120 watt USB-C power leads. I don't think they'll do it. I don't want to fuck around with it anyway. So probably not for that one. Although I'm pretty sure like the E model is a standard power supply. I don't actually have one of those now that I think about it. Either way, that's part of it. The other part's going to be just a shit ton of Genesis 2 or Mega Drive 2. I don't know why I say Genesis first. I'm in Australia. We had a Mega Drive. You guys are losers who had a Genesis. Not really. It's a dumb name though. So I, I, I know enough to get myself in trouble. That's the biggest issue. I know enough to get myself in trouble. But I'm going to do my best to not blow anything up. Big caveat here. I'm not an electrical engineer. This is not necessarily a guide on how to do this. It might work for me. It might cause untold and unforeseen damage. Or long-term damage. Do this at your own risk. Do your own research. Learn something. Learning is fantastic. That's why I'm doing this. I love learning stuff. Well, and I hate cables. So I guess the first thing we should do is actually pull this thing apart. And what I want to look for is the regulator. So the reason I want to look for that, is it that guy? I think so. The reason I want to look for the regulator is generally when the power goes in, at least for these older consoles, I'm not sure about the newer ones, is it's expecting an unregulated power supply. So what that means is it's not necessarily going to always be the voltage it says it is. And it might not be constant either. It might, if you've got a 12 volt power supply, it might be between 11 and 14 volts. If you've got a 9 volt power supply, it might actually just be 8 volts, it might be 10 volts. And it might fluctuate. Oh, got most of them out. And we'll use a regulator to make sure that that voltage is regulated. What happens before the regulator doesn't matter. If you have a regulator, as long as the voltage is that you... Oh, this is the one I modded. <laughs> oh, I forgot I did that. Sorry, admiring my own shitty handiwork. This was before I was not lazy about this. That guy I'll go into later. The reason it doesn't matter is, as long as the voltage goes going into the regulator is within the regulator's operating range, or it's properly cooled, uh, preferably both, you actually won't have an issue. Once again, not an electrical engineer. It's just what I think I know on the matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this apart, and once again I'm going in blind, and I want it to go in blind because I want to figure it out. I I want to learn this. I'm actually thinking about there's a couple of courses that I can do at the local TAFE to do 
uh, like intro to electrical engineering and figure out how this whole shit actually works. And I really, really want to do that. And I might, if I can find the time. Ow! <laughs> Motherfucker, that hurt. Whew. Fucking spring got me. <laughs> we are off to a rip-roaring start. Does this come out? No, okay. So it's probably screwed in through all these guys. That's fine. I thought it might be a all-encompassing RF shield. It is not. That is fine. I really hope this is in view. I do not have a top view. Look at a mirror. I'm using my very cursed recording setup. If you're interested in that, there's a video on that, which I'll hopefully remember to link. Um, if not, everything on my channel is cursed anyway. I'm not missing much. So this here is technically a region mod. Does uh, it intercepts the reset switch, and if you hold it down for an appropriate amount of that all one piece, no. If you hold it down for an appropriate amount of time, it will change the region or change the um, 50, 60 hertz, which is not the same thing. Um, so. I did that quite a while ago. I don't know if I did a video on it, to be honest. It was not hard to do. But on the plus side, it's very hard to get out now. Okay. Cool. Wish I knew this was the modded one. I would have used a different one. Because this one is kind of manky. That's okay. Can I get this off? This is going to have to be done very delicately to not break the mod I've done, because I really don't feel like figuring out how to repair it right now. The regulator I don't think will be under here, it'll be under this big shroud. That is correct, so I can just throw that back on and pretend we saw nothing. I would not recommend doing that mod anymore. There's quite a few good um, PCBs you can get that do it all for you and you solder in a single PCB and it's like two wires and you're good to go. Um, I do not know what they're called, where they are, or where you get them from. But in the... I have what they like to call stupid fingers. Uh, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. Learning stuff. Do it yourself. Oh, the regulator's right there. I'm very clever. So what actually is under there? It's probably half of the power delivery circuit and all the... Yeah, that's right. I'll take this off anyway. Because I want to do some toning to see where things run. Now, if you're taking this off, be very, very careful. Because you don't want to accidentally snap the regulator pins off. Because then you are fucked. Well, you're not, but you have to buy a new one. So, here's my first thing, okay? This is a PAL Super Nintendo, and that comes with an issue. USB-C is DC. This guy right here, AC, 9 volts. I'm under the assumption that the regulator itself takes DC. That is why my laptop is here. I'm going to research that, and I'm assuming that... This big hunk of love right here, which I'm going to turn my light on. Don't I look pretty under the glow? This big hunk of shit right here, because that's directly from the inputs of the power supply, is going to be some kind of, I think they're called rectifiers that take AC and convert them to DC. But the beautiful thing is we can look it up. I'm just going to quickly do that. Just give me a moment. 20 minutes later. Okay, through the power of editing, you saw, oh god, the 20 minutes, since <laughs> the 20 minutes of me doing that. But, I was mostly right about how this is working, and even the terminology, which is great. So, the power plug goes straight into this, uh, what's it called? Common mode filter for general signal line, which is, I think, EMI filtering. I could be wrong, but either way, not necessary for this particular project. Then we have... 
a silicon bridge rectifier. This guy right here, which hopefully you can see. That is the guy that's converting it from AC to DC. Have the terms right. That goes through this filter capacitor. I assume it's a filtering capacitor. But once again, that's all done via the magic of my USB-C plug, which has gone AWOL. Where are you? I don't know. It doesn't matter. It does matter. There it is. <laughs> Found you. Um, and that goes into the 7805 bridge, uh, bridge rectifier. 7805. Um, where is the page I had up? 7805. 05? I typed it wrong? No, 7805 um, regulator. Good lord. And then it goes out through this other surge, uh, surge filter. Uh, surge something. Whatever. Absorbs the current. Um, transient surge absorber. So, more or less, these are the three components that we're interested in, and those two we're not anymore. So, Hopefully, <laughs> this is the fun part, I should be able to just straight up remove them. So I'm going to wet myself and do that. But I need to go heat up my iron and everything. So, give me a minute. A little more than a few moments later. Okay, just as a proof of concept, not a proof of concept. This whole thing is a proof of concept, by the way. This is not the final build. This is me just fucking around and finding out. But just to show you this thing does actually work, so. It's got power. Perfect. Unplug you. Unplug you. And I've pre-tinned some wires. I guess now's the time to... Point in no return. If you're seeing this video, this probably worked, or it failed so spectacularly I thought I'd get to go viral for it and wanted to share it. Uh, I might leave that plugged in actually. <clears throat> it all stays together. So I need to remove this, the um, the bridge rec the rectifier. So we'll just add some more fresh shoulder to it. Come on. Come on. The ground. Right out the little ones. The fresh shoulder is so it's a bit easier for it to melt. This tip is probably due for replacing. One thing I do remember from my electronic plaster that I did do is do this in a ventilated area. This is not a ventilated area. Do as I say. Not as I do. Um, do I just cut it? I don't know where my solder wick is. I don't know where my desoldering pump is. I'm just going to cut it. Give me a second. Okay, so that's out. That was only a little bit scary because I haven't done this in a while. I'm definitely not showing you doing it on camera because it was bad. But, if I flip this over now, I should hopefully have three pins. I've got input, ground, and output. So, I'm going to solder a wire to input and to ground. I'm going to set up my trigger board to be 9 volt. Now, it's going to be a bit hard to see, but... Come on. Hey. Come on. I hope my face is pretty. Anyway. Okay, it's going to be a bit hard to see. There are four little pins here. Uh, I'll flash a picture up on the screen, actually. And you basically just close it. You bridge two pins to tell it what voltage you want. So I do not want 12 volts, although it would work, just not ideally. I'm going to bridge 9 volt with my solder blob, hopefully. Bridging is something I'm usually very good at accidentally. Just give it a 
quick continuity check. So I didn't accidentally bridge anything. Gotta test them, it's like clacking your tongs. Now I'm going to, I'm going to solder this one and see what happens. Give me a moment. Okay, we've got our wire soldered. Um, they look pretty neat. Once again, proof of concept. I need to get a 3D printed um, back piece here, which looks like it just clips out. Um, and I'll likely remove the RF modulator as well because who the fuck uses RF anymore just checking there's no bridge between uh, ground and oops nope okay bring ground in input now here's the fun bit we get to find out if I've just wasted a bunch of money to blow up a <laughs> to blow up a Super Nintendo or I um I've actually got this working. <sighs> Come on, plug in. Well, it's always on. That's a problem. But works. So obviously, I have to. Um, go through the switch. I would have thought the switch would be... No, that makes less sense. The switch is definitely on the input side, not the uh, output side of the regulator. So I'll quickly figure that one out, and I'll be right back. Okay, so... I probably should have shown the other side. I just soldered it to this side of the switch, which seems to be the input side, and that's against the output side when they're bridged. So, I guess we see what happens. It's off. Now, all in all, this is an extraordinarily simple thing. And there is probably a thousand electrical engineers out there going, this is, what, what are you celebrating? This is me not exploding my childhood SNES. And doing a thing I wanted to do to it. And I'm very happy with that. Because learning is fucking awesome. Now, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to try it. And we're going to talk about next steps. So just give me a moment. So apology for the very sketchy recording. I could not be asked setting up my thing, and this is cooler anyway. So here we go. Holy fuck. There we go. I'm very happy. Let's go back over there. Okay, so what have we learned? Let's take the game out. You can, I've turned off the second camera, so you don't worry about that. You can just look at my lovely face. What have we actually learned here? This is possible. That's the most important thing I've learned. Now, I figured it was. I had no reason to believe it wouldn't, but I'm also, as I said, just smart enough to be dangerous. I know enough to hurt myself. And that really is a problem. But I'm very happy I had the basics and could figure it out. So where to from here? Well, first, I need to get a 3D printed enclosure for the back, at least. I need to take the RF modulator out. Uh, the AV multiport can stay because, for now, for now. Um, but that might be another one I have to keep. I don't know if I'm 3D printing an entire back thing because I don't know why it's like attached. It's very strange. I guess it's because the AC part's like an enclosed thing. I don't know. Um, I have to remove the rest of the. AC components. Um, I'll do that when I can find my solder pump and the braid and all that and do it properly. 
or my hot air station or something. Um, I should have used that now that I think about that. I know where that is. Anyway, but this is cool. This is really cool because this is possible. And with a little bit of, once again, I don't know much, but a little bit of 3D printing design, which I've done a little bit, um, and just a little bit of fucking around, it's going to be possible to get USB-C on most of the things I own, which is incredible. I, and just for the people who were watching the, the last part, I did put the um, heat sink back on because having a regulator without a heat sink is just a recipe for disaster. It'll run for a little bit and then it'll overheat and explode even though I wasn't going to have it on for very long. I didn't want to risk it. So, I'm very happy. That's the conclusion. This is entirely possible. If you know what you're talking about and you can point out some glaring issues with what I've done, please let me know. Constructive feedback is always welcome. If you give me some terms I can look up or some resources I can look at, I would absolutely love that. The only time I don't like criticism is when it's mean, I guess for the lack of a better term. I just, I'm very happy to learn. My, uh, my, my job, I do that a lot. Like if you've ever done software engineering, you know there's a lot of code reviews, a lot of back and forth, a lot of discussion. And if you're afraid to be wrong, you're in the wrong business. I'm not, I learn things from being wrong. I prefer to be right, but being wrong is also good, as long as I don't, you know, explode my snares or something like that. But, this is awesome. And that's the conclusion. Learning is awesome. Figuring stuff out is awesome. No doubt someone's already done this. I have zero doubt that someone's already done this, because I saw um, Linus's video on USB-C stuff. Um, but he used an NTSC one, which is DC already, so he probably just used a barrel adapter and a trigger thing. Someone's definitely done it. No, this is not the newest of ideas. Next on the road for this, probably to fix up this mod, to be honest. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what a clusterfuck. I just realised that I've just got a bunch of like resistors being taped up there. Next is actually to do the 3D printed back. I hope there's already one out there for it, so I don't have to design it because I'm bad at designing things, but we'll see how that goes. Otherwise, just, just chat at me down in the comments below. And hopefully we can do something cool with this snares next time as well. Catch you later. So it's a couple of days later. Have you ever done something and then like at 3 a.m. you wake up in a cold sweat like, ooh, I could have done that better? Yeah. The thought I have was, I've taken out the the rectifier that converts AC to DC and not just put the DC voltage into those two points. That would have been much cleverer. So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to attempt to mount this. Now I had a bit of a look uh, online for some 3D prints to maybe get like a, a full backplate that I could either put my USB in or some sort of USB mount for it. And the best I could find was this little guy, um, which goes into the RF out port, which I'm gonna remove. But unfortunately, this is for a USB-C port that protrudes and um, my one does not. So I can't put that on. I could probably use it to line it up, but then it's gonna to be too far back. So, I am hoping I can just sort of shove this up against the RF out hole and there'll be enough clearance for me to plug it in, but I'm going to test that. Um, but first, I've got to get to removing stuff, um, starting with the power jack and the RF adapter and my USB-C mod, and I'm going to put it back into where the bridge rectifier came in, so this should be fun. I found some desoldering tools. I have lost my hot air gun attachment, so I can't use my hot air gun to remove the RF adapter, which stinks. But, we'll see how good I go. Okay, so I've done that. Um, excuse the mess I've left. But, turn it over. RF adapter's gone. The AC input is actually part of the panel. Um, but, we'll get to that in a second, which is now. 
Um, I've gotten a different cable because this cable is a slightly longer uh, neck or slightly sl longer actual plug part and that works fine. Uh, my other one didn't quite sit flush or sit all the way in but this one does. Um, I think in future I'll try to invest in some like a little mini USB-C male to female plugs like ones that are just like yay big just so I can protrude it out. Um, but yeah, it seems to work. So as a temporary, and I, I mean this temporary thing, I'm going to uh, hot glue this in. And for the future, I'm going to probably 3D print something because I want to get rid of this AC plug and I don't really want to just break it, but I think I'm going to have to. Dogs are fighting inside. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that. Give me a moment. Okay, so yes, it's upside down. It's hard to see now that I've covered in hot glue, but there's a, a little lip and the circuit board was hitting it. If it was the other way around, it wasn't quite out far enough. So it seems to work okay. I'm not going to trust it too much. I'm going to be gentle with it. But now we should be able to... No. Anyway, I'm going to solder this into the points from the bridge rectifier and I guess test it and button it back up and then go play for probably international soccer because that's what I've got sitting over there. So let's do that now. And there it is. It actually works. No one is more shocked than I am, trust me. So, I'm going to go plug this in over at the TV. Uh, you know what? Actually, no. I know it works. It doesn't matter. Um, I showed the video of it working. So, just a little post-mortem on it, I guess. So, this is cool. I like this a lot. I learned a lot, which is my favourite thing. Um, I'm going to turn this camera around a little bit. So I learned heaps, which is great. Um, the one thing I learned is I need to get a USB port that ex uh, protrudes, not extrudes. So I'll be looking into that. Um, the the 3D print, which has disappeared forever. There it is. Um, the little USB-C board that went with this was literally just, um, it takes power out of it. So that's not what we want for this because I want it to be all in one and you can use any power cable where the one that this guy used was a specific USB-C power cable that had the trigger board already in it, which is not what I want. So uh, some kind of other panel mount or something like that that I can plug it into is probably on the cards. I'll have to do some research or USB trigger boards that have a protruding port rather than one that's sort of sitting flush. Um, but also like if I 3D printed a, a back plate for it, I can always just like recess that bit. So that's fine. We'll see how we go. Um, whatever's easier is what I'll do to be honest. Um, my 3D modeling skills are bad. But in the end, I can't really leave it like that. I probably could, but I'm not going to. Um, I can't believe this actually worked. This is not a terribly hard project, but... What's sitting flush? Yeah, it's not flush. Kind of. It's not a terribly hard project um, to figure out. The power circuitry on this stuff is, is relatively simple. It's generally some kind of filter, uh, a capacitor I think is also filtering and a regulator a 7805 or a, it's usually 7805 so actually doing this is fairly simple the NTSC model would be even simpler because you don't have to bypass the AC circuitry um, but the removing that isn't exactly difficult it's it's a single single plug and that will um, also sever the connection between the AC and DC stuff so, not that you'd really want to plug AC into this now. 
Well, that would blow it up. I'm not going to try it, but I wonder if it would. Um, if soldering isn't your thing and you like USB-C everything like I do, there are heaps of things you can get that simulate this, where you just get a barrel plug to USB-C um, and you just plug it in. Uh, they sell heaps of them, and then you can do the exact same thing without having to actually mod your consoles. That's also a fantastic option, but I like doing this kind of thing, so that's why I've done it. Um, in the end, of course, you do whatever you want, um, or do nothing. That's also what you might want. I, I really enjoyed this. I'm going to be playing this on stream, which has probably already happened by the time I edit this video, because I am very slow at that. But all in all, I am very happy with my project. This video is probably way too long for what it is, but this is more of a learning journey for me, and sort of documenting that, and hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, if you did, or if you have any, once again, comments, tips, tricks, things I should be learning, please let me know down below. Um, once again, not an electrical engineer. The long longevity of this mod, I don't know. I assume it's fine, it's just DC power going into it. But I don't know. So don't do this unless you know what you're doing. This is not a, I believe in this mod, even though I do, I'm not 100% sure. I'm sure enough to do it to my own. I'm not sure enough for you to say to do it to yours. But either way, it's really early in the morning. I'm really tired and I haven't had coffee yet. Which probably explains why this took 50 minutes to do. <laughs> yeah. I'll catch you on the next one.